Tank's nice and dry now. Maybe a little bit damp at that far end, is it? Mm, tiny bit. Still looks a bit rusty though. I think we need to put something in it and shake it round. That filter's clean in the middle of the screen now. I'm just going to shake the tank now with some little bit of diesel in. I'm going to knock this wood chip down flat. So there's a bed so we can tip the diesel out into the wood chip and then that way it'll just go through the boiler and get burnt with all the other bits of rust and rubbish in the tank rather than going down a drain somewhere. Soak in there, nice. Right, we shut that out now. Lift it back on. My dad did stand in the way of that video, but never mind. And then we're going to clean the pipes, put the other side on. We're on a quick clean. Right, there's something really odd going on with this stone trailer. It's starting to look yellow, and apparently the RAL code 1007 is JCB yellow. Now, this is the tin that we took to match, which, to be honest, it looks like it's the same colour. And it looks orange on it, and it says RAL code 1007. And that is the Richard Weston colour that we got mixed when we painted the muck spreader, when we put the greedy boards on it. But I don't know why that looks yellow and that looks orange, yet it's coming out the same tin, and I've got another tin to match. Let's go and have a look what it looks like next to a trailer. So that is the colour next to the trailers. It looks pretty, pretty much the same colour if you ask me, if we put that drip next to it. That's a pretty good match. So I don't understand it because Richard Weston is, is more of an orange than a yellow. So I don't get why RAL 007 is for JCBs. Yeah, that's what it says on that tin. That's what I've got made. And then we painted that and it looks yellow. Just confused. So does anyone know what the Richard Weston RAL code is? Got the airline on the front of the fence. Rob's just gonna blow down the suction pipe now. And then we're gonna see if anything comes out before we put it back on, which is here. Go on, try it. Is that blowing now? No? Be blocked solid with rubbish. Not a little bit now. Nah, nothing proper. No, just a dribble. We're just going to take the lift pump off and check that there's no gauze in it. Check the banjos first. No rubbish in them. Cleaning it. Should have blow back down that now. See. I'll do it. This is driven by the uh, crank or one of the push rods, so we'll take it off. There might be a gauze inside here. Sometimes they have a gauze inside them. Rob's gonna blow down that pipe now and check that there's no restriction in that. Yeah, that's all right. Rob's got the lift pumping bits and look what the little filter's like. Ugh. This is a bit of a pain, them bolts, trying to get them into there, them holes. Can't see, can you, hold on? Can't get them bolts through there into there because it's trying to like squeeze the tank. So we're gonna have to get a bottle jack to hold it up and push it shut maybe with mole grips. Just got a little narrow ratchet strap now. We're gonna try and thread that around the tank, pull it together with that, and then hopefully we can get the bolts in easier because it's really awkward and springy, the plastic tank. Yeah, we've got that bracket now. Rob's gonna lift it onto the clips at the front there. We'll try and thread this strap round, right round and pull it tight. Can always just leave the ratchet strap on it. No. no, you need to push up a bit. It's like not clipping in. Go on, that's it. Oh, it's still not wanting to go. How far is it out? A couple of inch. Take three. 
Now we've got the bottle jack to lift it up and the ratchet strap to pull it in. The metal tank went on dead easy. and then draw it together and change it to a small bolt. Pretty close to that now, I think if you just go jack up a little bit higher it'll probably get it. Just jack it up a bit there now, I don't want to put jack in the little finger. Just... It's a bit of both in it. Need a podgy bar now, pull that further forwards. Might go that, you know. On the tyre and then pull it around. Will it go up a bit? It's about the right height now, isn't it? Yeah. Still wants to come to me a bit though. That's it. Let's try that now. Tiny bit, tiny bit, a little bit, a little bit, a little bit. So that's, so that's going to hit me in the face if it slips and it go a little further. Come to me ever so slightly more. Right, hold on. Oh, let me try the back one. No, that's a bit. That would go with that if I had a spanner. Finally, big bar, jack, and the ratchet strap. We've got the first bolt in now. There we go. Right, get rid of the bolt in. But two drums is clean diesel in it now. Rob's just going to pump it through with a lift pump, hopefully. Let's go and see if it's coming through the other side. Nothing yet. Flood update. I think it's actually growing from yesterday, despite not raining much today. I think one of the pumps must not be working. Anyway, we're just trying to get the fuel up through to the 1455 so that we can get it started. Just, just having a bit of trouble getting it to the lift pump, so I'm gonna steal Christine's leaf blow while she's not here. Put in the tank, pressurize the tank with diesel, and push it up, hopefully, to the to the lift pump and then we'll work it. But there should be a little leaf blower in here because we use it for blowing off the back of the wagons when they tip off. Shh, don't tell her. It's got a five amp power battery on this. Only needs a three. Blow it in there now. It'll pressurise it up. Coming out now, anyway. Bled it all through now. Let's see if it starts. There we go. Easy. There we go, nothing seems to be leaking. A job well done. Not even leaking out the bung either. Reel back on, just needs a wash off and it's all done. Let the jack down. Just taking it around now to the jet wash and then put the side panel back on and then the exhaust back on. Just wash all the fuel that we spilt off the side. Otherwise they get all hot and stinky. Give you a headache when you're driving it. Tapping and annoying me. Just weave through the Merlots and then try it up the yard. Seems to be pulling all right. Actually, sounds better with the exhaust on. We're going to put the silage trailer on it, see what it sounds like pulling up the hill. It's empty like, but we'll try it. It's all right, even the indicators work. I'm halfway up the hill now, so by this point, hopefully it'll be singing as it comes up past us. Just waiting for it to turn around the office car park. There it comes. Phone. So 
of diesel on one of the lenses. Knows it's got it on like. Maybe a pump needs turning up. I think we should have put the stone trailer on. Filled it with stone and timed them all up the hill maybe. There he is after he's been around the block. Someone's watched him in a light aircraft. Just in case Christine's watching, there's the leaf blower back in her office. Looks like it's going to be another good sunset tonight. Quickly do the birthday bumper. So Mike Biggins, Max Lumley, Aaron Corkill, Simon Aitken, William Robinson, Will Howe, Jane Sunley and Lisa Pierce. So happy birthday to you guys. It's got to stick out the yard. I'm going to go and stick it in the corner of the flood. And then tomorrow we'll see whether it's gone down or not. I think it's definitely been higher because it's quite wet here and the water starts there so put the stick in the edge of the water there probably about here and then see tomorrow what it's like suddenly realized i obviously bought this stone trailer in the summer and last winter we were doing draining people knew what a stone trailer was but lots of new subscribers don't understand what a stone trailer is or why i've got it Basically, when you dig drains, you dig a trench in the field with like a big chainsaw thing we've got that goes on the back of the tractor. And then you put stone above the drain so the water finds its way down easier. So the idea of this is it's a big hopper. You fill it full of stones and then you drive along the field with the belt going and it dispenses the stones into the trench you've done. So you could do like a few hundred meters with one sort of hopper full or whatever, or this trenching machine, a roll of pipes, 100 meters long. So you've got these really long trenches that you need to fill up. And if you went with a bucket on a machine, you'd have to keep going up to the trench, tipping a bit, moving over eight foot and keep tipping it again. And it's really slow or go with a digger and be scooping out the trailer. Whereas this, you just fill it, just drive along nice and steady and just let it meter it all out. So that's the point of a stone trailer. We did look at getting a bigger one or making one that we could then fill with seed, fill in the drill. Anyway, it's totally impractical and that's why we've got the mini Merlot and the longer low loader to do that for filling the drill. But that is what a stone trailer is for. So you'll see it in action in a few weeks if it dries up enough for us to do some draining. So the 1455 now is running sweet as anything. So thanks Rob for that. Rob is also on TikTok, so you can watch him on here. I think the next thing we need to drain is probably that MB track because that's been stood for a while as well. There's basically a bit of a bacteria that gets in old diesel. So there's an additive we can put in it, but a lot of the modern tractors use the diesel that quick that it doesn't actually matter. Sorry, you're getting a shadow off the uh, <laughs> reindeer. Anyway, that's all for today. Thanks for watching and I'll see you all tomorrow. Oh no, actually, sorry, before I do that, tomorrow's video, do we want a roundup of the last year or do we want a photo montage or do we just want the highlights of the year or just like the machinery that maybe came last year? I don't know. Leave a comment below what you want to see on tomorrow's video because I think we need to do something to mark 2021.